Okay. Good evening. Planning board is now in session. It's uh, Monday, April 11th, 7 p.m. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency signed into law on June 16th, 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance by members of the public will be permitted. People who wish to watch or participate in the meeting may do so by finding the meeting at www.southboroughtown.com slash remote meetings. First item on the agenda is the master plan committee update. Mrs. Luttrell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the master plan committee last met on April 6th. Uh, looking at the final edits on the final chapters, we also received 100 or so pictures in our master plan committee photo contests and the committee is busy casting their votes now for their top 10 photos from each photographer. Um, next week I'll be meeting with Judith and she has found somebody to do the final editing pro bono. So I'll be meeting, having a planning session with them. Um, and we still hope to have something for town meeting in a joint planning board, select board meeting the beginning of June. Hopefully we will tie this up and this will be one of the last few updates. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Any questions or comments? Compliments? Yeah, just a compliment. Well done. Yeah, Mimi, it was well put together. I spent some time with it over the weekend. It's amazing. Are the pictures mostly uh, like contemporary now nowadays pictures, or do they are they a mix? Um, they're a mix. They're really some really nice pictures. Some of the old South Pro pictures. Um, there may have been a couple, not too many old ones. Do you have any old pictures? Well, they're all, all around, but I just didn't know if you were, if the, um, master plan was, uh, focused on the, the world of today or if it was going to be a blend. I think there were a couple older pictures, but it's mostly contemporary. Look forward to seeing it. Okay. We have, uh, a couple of public hearings. I can move on to the next agenda items. Um, we have uh, the next two public hearings. Our uh, proponents are, have requested an extension, and I don't believe they're in attendance. So this is the uh, public hearing. It's uh, 325 Turnpike Road, Ken's Foods Expansion, major site plan approval. Continued from September 27th, October 18th, November 15th, December 13th, January 10th, January 24th, February 7th, February 28th, and March 14th. And the 325 Turnpike Road Ken's Foods Expansion Special Permit for Lower Impact Development continued from those same dates. Um, we have a request in writing from uh, Ken's representative uh, to Continue the hearing from tonight to our next meeting, which is April 25th, 7 p.m., and to um, grant an extension of the approval period to May 27th, 2022. So um, unless there's any questions or comments relative to the, this proposed action tonight, we'll entertain a motion uh, to uh, Grant the uh, extension of the approval period. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded in any discussion. Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Latrell, yes. Lahan, yes. Okay, we've, we've extended the approval period, which allows us to uh, continue the public hearing to um, uh, April 25th at 7.05 p.m. So moved. Second. Motion's been made that, and seconded. Any discussion? That's for, that's for both hearings, both the 
special permit and the major site plan. That's the revised uh, motion. Yes. And seconded. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Luttrell, yes. Lehan, yes. Okay, we'll see them on the uh, 25th. The next uh, thing on the agenda, item on the agenda, is a continued public hearing for 200 Turnpike Road. Snow removal slash landscaping contractor facility. It's a major site plan approval. And also a uh, special permit for lower impact development. These hearings are continued from November 15th, January 10th, January 24th, Jan uh, February 7th, February 28th, and March 14th. Um, if there's no questions or comments, we can entertain a motion to uh, extend the approval period for both lower impact development permit, special permit, and the site plan approval. Extend that approval period to uh, May 27th. So moved. Seconded. Motion's been made and seconded to extend the approval period for both uh, special permit and site plan approval. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes? Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Patrol, yes. Bullahan, yes. Very good. We now would uh, entertain a motion to continue these public hearings to uh, April 25th at 7, 10 p.m. So moved. Second it. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Patrol, yes. Bullahan, yes. Very good. Our next uh, item on the agenda is a 715 public hearing, a continued public hearing. Um, and I, my clock says it's 709, so we'll just wait a minute. Um, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Mills. Can I make a motion we uh, approve the minutes from uh, March 28th? 2020, two. Second for discussion. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion, Mr. Stein? Um, although I was not present, I did watch the meeting and uh, reviewed the minutes. So I will vote. Thank you. See, it's now 710, so we can continue with the approval of the minutes. Any other questions or comments? on the uh, meeting minutes of March 28th. Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Luttrell, yes. Houlihan, yes. Very good, minutes are approved. Next item on the agenda at 7.10 is, sorry, 7.15. Oh, I got this all mixed up. We have another five minutes to go. So let's um, go to the uh, planner's report if we can. You ready, Karina? Sure. Ready? I am. Mm -hmm. If I can just see it. Um, just so you're aware, um, I put a copy of the current draft warrant um, in the Dropbox for everybody. And uh, for reference, um, the planning board sponsored articles are article 27 and 28. And um, that's all about that, bear with me. Um, advisory has asked for a joint meeting with select board and the planning board um, on Wednesday, the 13th. And um, Colleen posted an agenda today um, for that joint meeting. I know that uh, Mamie and Dawn and um, Marnie indicated they were gonna attend, so we, took the safe route and posted it in an agenda. And that's also been sent to all the planning board members. Um, so you were aware of that. Um, I believe Colleen mentioned at the last meeting that town is researching returning to in-person meetings with a hybrid virtual um, approach. Uh, then I believe they're still working on that. Nothing has been updated since then. Um, 
The um, town is also, the selectman's office is also looking for um, people to be part of the South Pearl 300 year anniversary. So there was a flyer that's posted and um, that was sent out to everybody. Um, with me. Outdoor dining applications. Oh yes, outdoor dining applications. So um, I can't really read it. Um, Colleen, do you know anything more specific about that? Um, let me just can't read it. It just says the guidelines and application requirements. Um, oh, that's right. Like, yeah. Yeah. You don't have to call it, it up. It's a new form. Mm -hmm. It's a new form that I think that people who are interested in maintaining the outdoor dining, right? Yep, that's it. If anyone has questions on that, you can call um, the planning office and we'll go into more detail. And um, just FYI that the select board are going to sign the warrant tomorrow evening at their meeting and intend to send it to the printers Wednesday morning. Um, so any last changes we have from tonight, we can still incorporate tomorrow if needed and update the um, uh, Mark Purple so he can get that in the final warrant. And that's all I have. Any questions or comments on all of that? Just gotta say, uh, Karina, you're a trooper. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I just wanna get it on the, off the plate. <laughs> Feel better, Karina. Thank you. So um, we still have a couple of minutes. This afternoon, I received a phone call from attorney Pizzoni oh. regarding Ken's and uh, we, he um, only discussed with me, uh, actually discussed uh, what just happened, which is that no one from Ken's was gonna show up and that they had requested an extension. But he also uh, uh, asked if I could attend a, um, I think it's a Thursday night, this Thursday at 7.30 at Ken's um, to uh, l meet with uh, people from Ken's and I think the neighbors relative to the noise. And I suggested that um, it would be more productive if another member of the planning board uh, attended that uh, get together rather than me. Um, so I'm put. You don't have to answer tonight, but if um, it, it, I I would hope that maybe one person, one or two could uh, get get to this the Thursday? site. Yeah. I unfortunately I have a CPC meeting and I cannot attend. Mm -hmm. can I just ask a quick question? Um, uh, you said neighbors were invited. Was there some sort of invitation that went out by email or? Or was this just a, a kind of conversation that you had with him that he's hoping to have neighbors go? Um, somewhere in between. Um, I'm not aware of any formal invitation, but he did say uh, that uh, some representatives from Ken's and say who uh, and people from the neighborhood. I did ask, is there going to be anybody there at the meeting that would be a uh, considered a um, a sound engineer, a sound expert. And he said he didn't think that anyone like that would show up, but they're, I think they're hoping for, um, to benefit if there is the noise that people in the neighborhood are hearing, if they do hear it and are able to, um, I guess, move around the site um, and to see maybe where it's coming from or to see where it's the loudest, the receiving end of it. I just thought that um, that might be, we can get more details. I think the reason I'm bringing it up is to see if anybody has any interest and or uh, available at that time. You know, it's still light out at seven 7.30. Um, and then I, I can get more details from attorney Pizzoni. Go ahead, Marnie. Um, sorry, Mimi, just want two clarifying questions. So the first is my concern is that it's April vacation and I already know of many families that are scheduled to leave like the Thursday, Friday. So like, 
It worries me if the neighbors aren't going to be there, aren't, aren't going to be able to be there. And then um, what time on Thursday? When does April vacation start? Um, it's well, Good Friday is is Friday. So people will have that off. And then there a lot of people are out Thursday. And that's an early start to next week's April. Correct. Vacation. OK. So okay. I, I wouldn't advise it if they can push it off when when more people could come and 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 then again, my last question before Mimi chimes in is just what time were they asking to do it? I think you said 730. Because I have a conflict. I, I just made um, arrangements for something that I can't back out of. But I would like to be there. So that's why I'd prefer to be there. Are they receptive to change the date, do you think? Or do you think you could have a follow conversation? I'll call Bill tomorrow and get more details. Um, I, I, um, kind of short notice at the time. I mean, it's, it, it was a cold call from him. So I, I was in the middle of doing something else. And at the time, uh, I was, uh, more focused on trying to, um, get information about the meeting, but also, uh, saying that I'm not going to be on the planning board much longer and it, they should, uh, have somebody else. Go ahead, Mimi. Uh, two things. One, I have an ARPA meeting on Thursday night, so I can't go either. And the second thing is that the Board of Health Director has her hand raised and she may be able to give more insight because I know she was working with them also. Wonderful. Go ahead, Heather. Oh, hi, it's Heather Algar, Health Director South Borough, and I heard you talking about the Thursday meeting. Um, we um, did um, pull together, I want to say in January and February, a meeting with Board of Health and with Ken's and with neighbors, okay? And then we asked Ken's for a meeting in April, a few weeks back, for our Board of Health three elected members to go on site at Ken. So this is not for the public. This is for, I believe, two out of three of our board members can attend Thursday night because we've talk, been talking about this issue and they haven't been on site and seen the truck. So, so, being, so being, I have a board of health meeting tomorrow. Um, okay. I, but, I just, but I did it right. We didn't know that's fine if, if folks from planning board want to come, but this is not a public. This is um, the board of health plus Ken's. So no okay, neighbors. I, no, this wasn't, um, no. Okay. I just got the impression that if I get invited, <laughs> then that would probably mean there's a long list of people that are invited before. There me. you go. Yeah. I mean, as far as I know, we emailed them about a month ago asking for our board of health members um, to go on site at Ken's. And um, we went back and forth and this is where we got. They offered us Tuesday evening or Thursday evening of this week. And unfortunately, Tuesday evenings, one of our board members has another board meeting. So this just basically boils down to forget I brought it up. There you go. And good luck. Uh, you, with, but you can come. <laughs> Be happy to have you. Thank you. But uh, we'll leave it. Uh, Board of Health and Ken's. And wish you luck. Well, it's now uh, a little bit past 7.15. So we have a continued public hearing, 154, 156, North Pro Road, modification to a major site plan approval. This uh, public hearing is continued from March 14th. We'll ask the, uh, the town planner to get, bring us up to date. Okay, as of the last meeting on March 14th, um, We have received, um, previously we had as built um, that were submitted um, by the proponent from 156 Northboro Road. 
um, prepared by um, Peter Bemis Engineering Design Consultants. And we provided that to Fuss and O'Neill for review, uh, at least for the civil site aspects, um, since the weather wasn't conducive until just recently for the landscaping, um, which will be phase two of the ASBUILT review. Uh, we received some comments back from Fuss and O'Neill, which um, I provided to the planning board and to um, Mr. Uh, Michael Quinn, Roger Kane, um, and uh, Peter Bemis. Um, we also provided um, the modification application to town council for review, which included uh, the proposed language change to the conditions of approval from the prior permit, changing those to um, from a rental regime to a um, ownership approach. And uh, along with that also were condo documents that was provided. Uh, and that we did receive feedback from town council um, that he didn't have um, a problem with changing, uh, modifying the conditions of approval that related going from rental to occupant or ownership. Um, and that, you know, and if the planning board members had additional conditions, um, that would be up to them. As far as the condo docks, they needed some work. Um, so the feedback from town council was provided to the proponent. Um, and um, then um, we did receive an extension request from the applicant uh, as their deadline for approval approaches uh, on April 24th, which is one day before the next planning board meeting. So um, just to take precaution and um, we have a, a signed extension request from the applicant. And um, I did speak to the building commissioner, Lori Lavoli, and um, she indicated to me that um, there's still pending um, documentation for the building permit for the project. Um, uh, various items. Uh, we also received um, um, uh, one of the things I wanted to point out was that the um, part of the as built review. Um, the engineer certified uh, the stormwater management uh, system that wasn't um, completely built to the same size. It's my understanding, um, slightly varied due to certain um, site constraints, I assume. So there is the potential that we request a copy of um, the stormwater calcs that the as-built engineer um, indicated that he ran in order to confirm that the way that the system was built meets the intent of the approved uh, prior plans. Um, and they've been made aware of that, um, the engineer has. And that brings us to this evening. And again, this is the modification to the major site plan approval that was approved back in 2018. All right, that's all I have. Great, thank you. Yeah. Is anyone from North Row Road here tonight? I see Mr. Michael Quinn. He's in the audience. Um, we have a hand raised. David Officer. Here. I'm an attorney. I represent uh, the owner. Hello, David. Hey, Don. It's nice to see you. Good to be seen. Good to see you. I saw you the other day. It was nice, nice talking with you. Go ahead, David. Uh, I'm going to defer to Mr. Quinn. Okay. Mr. Quinn. Mike, you're muted. How's that sound? Yeah, Welcome back. Better. I expected our engineer to be uh, present tonight, Peter Bemis. 
Um, is he on the Zoom call at all? I don't see him. Okay. Um, so I guess tonight we're looking forward, to, we're looking to move forward with the um, modification that goes from tenant landlord to occupant owner. Mike, did you, uh, just did you receive my um, my email regarding town council's feedback? I did. So you and had I, a chance to review that. Yeah, so I did see that, and I, I forwarded the uh, um, information to our attorney and asked him to um, make some some adjustments to the documents so they're not so. I think the word was sloppy. Um, and I asked, I asked him to contact the uh, town council to find out what he meant by that word, A, and B, what was sloppy about them. I know it's a draft. I know there were a couple of uh, small changes, just small corrections. But other than that, I don't get why, you know, he put the label on there. Uh, it's, 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 uh, I wish he was more specific. Then we could be more specific. I believe some of the things, and they can still be clarified, had to do with um, certain things not being referenced in the condo docs as well as. Um, yeah. So the we're going to make the, 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 the modification permit will have to be included. The protocol will have to be included. I also want to point out that the protocol that you provided as proposed still references tenants in the um, header of the document. Um, and there were some concerns from um, the building department as well in regards to um, the 30-day time frame that was in the protocol. Um, somebody would move into a unit, and then after 30, you know, within 30 days, they're already in, and then um, you know the protocol uh, would have to be addressed. So there was a little bit of concern with having that 30 day in there as opposed to prior uh, to moving in. Yeah, I believe we were just trying to mirror the previous protocol. Right, so um, there is some cleanup work to be done on the condo docs. So we're hoping that um, you can get those um, revisions back to us so that um, we can send them back to town council. Yeah, we should have them to you uh, in a couple of days. Marina, just... let's go back to the 30 day thing. Okay. Um, at the time in, what was it, 2018? Yes. Um, <clears throat> the planning board was looking at uh, rentals and there was great concern about uh, the tenants coming and going. Uh, and the potential for uh, things happening there that were um, either hazardous, potential hazards, or conflicting operations. So we went with that 30 day uh, piece of the uh, agreement, but the current uh, building inspector, and I think she may be right, uh, the 30 day, piece tends to drift over into the building inspectors uh, the way they operate. So she, I believe she's suggesting that we delete the reference to 30 days. Uh, and that would have the planning board um, less involved in that uh, transition period. So if you can live with that, then moving forward when you're cleaning up the rest of the document, um, then you can leave it out and, and, um, and submit that and see if, uh, and Karina can run that by the building inspector to see if that's an, an improvement relative to her um, uh, jurisdiction over uh, 
a tenant occupied single building. Okay. I think we can do that. And then just one. Oh, Don, can I just ask Dave, um, um, attorney David officer, he's representing the um, 156 North Borough Road. Is that what I understood? Yes. Okay. So, um, there, I thought in our previous discussions, we were focused on uh, the condo documents and uh, the simple change from rental to condo, because you indicated that the building is ready to go. And since then, the town planner and the building inspector have discussed uh, what seems to be some open items relative to the building ready to go. So we've got the building, we've got the condo docks, and then we've got the landscaping, all three. And I think uh, at the previous meeting or meeting meetings that we've had, you felt that uh, the planning board could make this, uh, can approve the modification to condos with the uh, with your assurance that you'd take care of the landscaping when the, the uh, weather was allowing that. So we can't do the condo docks tonight. Uh, we still have to get clar clarity from uh, the building inspector relative to the so-called open items. And now we're in uh, the springtime. So it would seem that the uh, plantings if this is the appropriate time of the year to get going on that, that you could do that also. I, I don't know if there's anyone more uh, wanting to wrap this up than the planning board. Uh, we just, we can't do it at this point because of these open items. Can you speak to the plantings? Uh, they're, they're in the process of being ordered. Uh, as I've stated before, we, we placed many of them last fall with native species. Um, and we have a few more to go. And then you'd be ready for an inspection of that? That's correct. As Soon as that approaches or is, is ready, um, we'd invite you to contact Karina and she could arrange for that inspection and get that, that item behind us. Great. Looking forward oh. to it. I'll open up to the planning board. Any questions or comments, um, Mr. Mills? On, I think, John, you summarized everything perfectly uh, where I'm, you know, my concerns and everything. So I have no questions. Thank you. John, can I just say one yep. thing before the planning board members continue? Because this is important to know. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to review the Fuss and O'Neill comments on the as built. Um, so there are some. Um, items in there that would also need to be addressed um, um, and explained um, and confirmed locations of hydrant. Um, there are some light poles that were um, um, al uh, along the edge of the rear parking area that do not appear to have been installed. I mean, sometimes that's a good thing, but if it's you know per the approved site plan, there are some issues within the um, as-built uh, follow-up review from Fuss and O'Neill that um, the applicant should probably meet with me to go over them as well um, in order to address those. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to that, Karina. Um, obviously, I can see your condition. So maybe towards the end of this week or the beginning of next week, we'll have a meeting. Yeah, that would be good. Great. Uh, then you could provide a response letter and, you know, to those comments and um, describe how you're going to remedy them or that you will be remedying them and, and actually taking that action. Yes, agreed. Okay, I sorry. Understand. We can understand why you would want to have a um, inspector 
we can only see out of one eye. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we'll leave that up to Karina when she's ready. Uh, and you, you tell her that you're, you're ready. Okay. Back to uh, Mr. Mills, you all set? There's four items now. The landscaping, building uh, inspector, the um, as-builts, and the um, condo, condo docks. Mr. Stein. Fortunately, Karina's condition is temporary. Uh, I'm looking forward to her recovery. Uh, at the last uh, hearing on this agenda item, uh, my position was I would uh, consider, you know, voting if uh, the only outstanding item was the landscaping. Um, it seems like, you know, we're in the exact same situation, more or less. And so it continues. Thanks. This is the trail. Yes, thank you. I, I think you did a nice job summarizing, Mr. Chairman. It seemed to be a, a lot of balls up in the air still, and I would like a lot more clarified before we move on. Thanks. Mrs. Hulia. My other board members have covered it. Thank you. Anyone else out there? Questions, comments? David, Michael? No, I look forward to our next meeting um, with resolution to a lot of these uh, open-ended items. I look forward too. to that. Oh, I'm sorry, Michael. Go I'm ahead, just David. saying, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, our next meeting to resolve these outstanding issues. I agree. So the next thing to uh, address would be the request for an, uh, an extension of the approval period. Is that right, Karina? Correct. Can we get that on the screen? Oh, Colleen's always ahead of us. And this would uh, allow, this would uh, extend the approval period to May 27th. I don't see anybody signing that though. I did send a, a signed copy to Colleen uh, earlier today. Okay. Did you get that, Colleen? Do you remember getting that? Um, I did get something from him, yes. Take you at your word that you signed it. So uh, the first thing, any questions or comments? Otherwise, we'll entertain a motion to um, extend the approval period to May 27th. So moved. Second. Motions are made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Luttrell, yes. Lehan, yes. Okay, now um, we can uh, continue this public hearing to April 25th at 7.15. So moved. Second. Well, this has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Petralia. Hulahan, yes. Okay, we'll see you on the uh, 25th. Great, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Next item on the agenda is a uh, public hearing, continued public hearing for a proposed warrant article to add a section to chapter 153, trees for a tree bylaw. This is continued from March 28th. Um, should we go to the town planner or should we go to Mrs. Luttrell. Just want to note for the record, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, Jesse did indicate he did the Mullins forms for both of these um, public hearings for the warrant articles from the 28th. Okay. Sorry. Mrs. Luttrell. Thank you. Um, yesterday, I received a, um, an in-depth review from Selectman Dennington, who was kind enough to go through the whole bylaw and wondered if the board wanted to uh, review his comments. And I think 
I think you have the, the uh, that document, Colleen, don't you? I, uh, I discussed this this afternoon with uh, Karina and it would seem uh, very appropriate if you're willing to do it and can speak to them. Uh, you've already gone over them, Mimi, so um, mm -hmm. I would suggest that we do that. They're not, uh, it's not, it's more than a, just a little handful, but I think we could manage it in the, in the next little bit of time here. Let's ask the rest of the, the rest of the board. Do we want to go through this? Yes, please. Okay, you're on, uh, Mimi. Is Andrew uh, with us? Yeah, I'm here. No, no, uh, oh. Andrew Dennington. <laughs> You're always Sorry, here. No. He's no, he's not no. in the attendees. All right. So the first um, issue that he commented on was the uh, definition of public shade tree. There, um, there's been a lot of confusion about that. Uh, 20 feet, and he had suggested um, an alternate definition that may clear that up, which would say a public shade tree is, is A, any tree within or on the boundaries of a public right-of-way, including scenic roads, except for a state highway, or B, a tree that is not within or on the boundaries of a public right of way, but previously has been planted by the tree warden upon adjoining land at a distance not exceeding 20 feet from the layout of such a public way with written consent of the owner of such adjoining land. And I would, I think that my opinion is that's pretty good and seems pretty clear, except for I would take out the previously um, previously has been planted and just put planted. So there's no confusion about that. And what's the opinion of the board on that? I'm fine, that looks good. I agree, yeah, that so seems fine. redundant. Re uh, planted is past tense and previous is past, past tense. Yeah. So redundant. sounds good. We good? So keep that uh, definition. Yes. But remove remove previously. Okay. And then he commented he was questioning um, if a if the second half of the definition if a highway boundaries are unclear because of the boundaries between public and private land cannot be made certain by land records monuments the trees. The tree is presumed to be a public shade tree according to chapter 87, section one. And he was asking if highways are town roads. And I believe when we um, met with town council and Karina and Don, you were there, that he said that the reference to highway there was referring to town roads. I, I remember that. Yeah, okay. So that we can just uh, just leave. Was, was that, did that discussion also include the word byways? I think somewhere in 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 the state language, they also use the word byways. Might not be this part of 87. Yeah. But. I don't remember that in 87, but probably because a lot yeah. of state law goes back to the beginning of time. And that seems like a popular old tiny word. So the next uh, comments were under the responsibilities of the tree warden, I think, or my, yeah. So he up, yeah, there, up, down, under four, and then A, B, C, D. There you go. He added, uh, instead of just trees, planting new trees, planting trees for safety and health, he added the public shade tree 
to each one of those each one of those sections. And I don't know if that's necessary because the tree warden has authority over public shade trees, but I don't know if it hurts to be more explicit, except if, except if we you know, expand this to include town trees or other trees that aren't in the, in the public right of way. Would those trees be in a park or a cemetery? Town trees, yeah. But they wouldn't be public shade trees. Mimi, since we've changed the definition up front of a public shade tree with more clarity that he's added that, does that I know he's asking the question here, but does that resolve what we were trying to do? Because isn't it both? It's in any tree within or on the boundaries of the public right of way. Our, our public shade trees, yes. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, but this is just for trees a public tree planting. So by saying public shade tree, you're excluding the trees in parks and cemeteries and yep. schools, schoolyards. Do you know if that's his intention? Um, I just received this from him last night and I didn't have a chance to um, discuss it with him. But that was my thought. Um, that, the, that it would restrict the ability to plant or care for trees on town property if, if this, these... Um, responsibilities were all changed to be specific to public shade trees. And then would the document be silent relative to the trees that aren't on roadways? So if I just, if I could interject for a second, it does say <clears throat> in purpose, uh, A, Two, that the purpose of the bylaw is to preserve and protect the town's public shade trees. So if that is the intent to, to, to make this bylaw specific to public shade trees, that would make sense. Which I guess would be okay, but if if it excludes the, the trees that are in parks, cemeteries and school grounds or other, other places where the town owns the land, but it's not on a road, who would be responsible for those trees? Mimi, was it your intention to make, to, to narrow the focus of the bylaw? that way? Um, so the intention was to follow chapter 87 in uh, chapter 4015C, which only deal with public shade trees. Got it, thank you. So we're there, All right? So just leave those as public shade trees. Could you somewhere put an add on paragraph or maybe a statement that says um, these, th these things will also apply to um, public trees in other areas of town owned property? Could it be that simple? 
it would be beyond chapter 87 in a sense, but this is a local bylaw that you could maybe add a statement like that, if that's the intent. With a, for example, cemeteries, et cetera, parks owned by the town, schools. So we do have um, a cemetery department. Do they do trees in cemeteries? It's my understanding well, that was tree wood all around. The, the cemetery department is, not sure if it's still called that, but it was absorbed by the DPW years ago. Right, but it's still, it's, it's still, a, it's still listed as a department under the DPW. So the, um, so the, in the different iterations of this bylaw, we had, uh, we grew it and we had like a tree board and we were dealing with more than just public shade trees. And then we trimmed it back. So it just followed chapter 87 in uh, chapter 40, 15 C to only deal with public shade trees. Do you feel that that's the way to go at this point? Keep it simple? I think so, yeah. I don't know if we necessarily need all of these because the because the jurisdiction that the tree warden has under this bylaw is to care for public shade trees. I don't know if we need, I don't know if it's redundant to have it listed here every single time. But I don't know, I don't know if it hurts either. I don't think it is because it, it I mean, it's, in the definitions, it lists what a public shade tree is. So, and the, the purpose says it's for public shade trees. So to me, I think Mr. Dennington is correct. Okay, so, so to, leave the, to leave these as he has edited them. Yeah, it minimizes the ambiguity. If there okay. is any. I what about her. Jay? Is that mean planting is deleted? I don't what what does his comment? Oh. So I think that for the purposes of this bylaw right now, it's just for planting trees within the public right of way. Well, is he questioning the action verb planting or is he questioning where the plantings? Is the word planting okay? Is that what you intended to leave that? Yes, yes. He's asking whether it's both town trees and public shade trees. But the planting within this bylaw it just deals with public shade trees. Who just typed that in there? Colleen. And you're okay with that? Everybody okay with that? Yes. Well, um, just a yeah. question. If you, um, why can't you, um, if, if, if money is being added to this tree fund, 
it can only be used for public shade trees. It can't be used for town property trees. Right, so if you have expenditure of funds for public tree planting and maintenance consistent with, oh, because it says consistent with the bylaw, it kind of mixes it again. Yeah. And then we'd also have to consider how it um, reflects in the revolving fund at the end, that language as well. Yeah, and there's a whole section on planting trees and it, it only, relates to public shade trees. So we good with that one? Yep. The next thing is L. So this, um, he added all regulations, fees and fines subject to approval of the select board. This I have an issue with because if the tree warden creates regulations and they're approved by the select board, it's considered a bylaw. So we'd, we would have competing bylaws, which just makes things confusing. And we tried to go the regulation route and it didn't work. So now we're doing a bylaw. So I don't think they've the regulation should be approved by the select board. The support Any other? And that's where we agreed we'd have kind of like a rules and reg document where fines and all that stuff could be done offline from a bylaw perspective. Right. So is he just suggesting um, that well, the, the person would report in through DPW. So fines and everything would be through whatever process that we go through now. Is that right? To get fines approved? Or we can write it in the rules and regulations that way? Because I, I would agree with you, Mimi. I think this, this makes it a little bit more challenging. That's why yeah. we eliminated that type of language in the other draft. Right. So I would vote to not include his amendment. Okay. It would be nice to know if he intends to make an amendment and sort of override that at town meeting. Maybe, I mean, do you have a sense of whether or not he's gonna, if we don't go along with this, if he's gonna make spot amendments himself on the town meeting floor? Um, I don't know, but we'll see him on Wednesday at the Joint Selectman Advisory meeting. I can ask him that. Thanks. But the, but the way Chapter 87 is written, that if the tree warden creates rules and regulations, they're approved by the select board, it has the power of a bylaw. So I don't know where it... So then we have two bylaws. It doesn't make any sense to me, but... So I'll ask him that on Wednesday. So do, do we agree to uh, take that edit out for the? Yes. The, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and then under jurisdiction, I think he was questioning the inclusion of the in conjunction with the planning board. So my feeling on this is that since the majority of roads in Southboro are already scenic roads that uh, the tree warden should be working in conjunction with the planning board. Is there any other opinion on that? Well, as applicable, if the if he's working on a road that's not a scenic road, then in conjunction with the planning board uh, doesn't apply. But if it's a scenic road, then right. it does. 
So I think I think it's sort of healthy for the planning board to make that determination. So I kind of like it the way it is. It, right. it, it does no harm. And it reminds the reader that the planning board is part of this, especially if it's a uh, scenic road. Right, yeah, I, I liked it the way it was, that it promotes interdepartment collaboration and cooperation. I concur. Um, and then under four, he added, um, either the town planner or the planning board. So if it's a something that can be answered quickly, it doesn't have to wait till there's a planning board meeting, he can call the planner. And I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that as well. That's an improvement. Yeah. Okay. And then, so then the next was the uh, permit required for um, construction or demolition activities within the uh, drip line of a public shade tree. And he, um, recommended removing that because he said construction isn't defined and it could be putting in a mailbox. But my opinion is I don't think anyone would consider putting in a mailbox construction. And if you're doing construction or uh, demolition within the drip line of a tree, you may kill th that public shade tree. And the reason for the permit is for the tree warden to help mitigate that in some way. Or if you put, or if you call because you're putting in a mailbox, he'll say, you know, that shouldn't be any harm and you don't need, you don't need my permission for that. So I would, I would keep that as is unless the board feels differently about that. I think maybe if he could opine on that, maybe Wednesday, just what he means, like, I would agree with you. I think generally a person, a lay person reading this versus an attorney reading this would go your route, but I think maybe just to have the conversation, but I tend to agree with you, Mimi. You could also add a, a definition for construction or demolition activities. Well, in chapter 87, Mimi, I don't have it in front of me, but don't they use the term construction and demolition in that state language without defining it? I believe so, yes. This should be just limited to the trees. Those, you know, the trees can grow quite large. So can't some bushes and flowers and things, but I mean, everybody has, almost everybody has some kind of landscaping in the right of way between their front property line and the pavement.
So aren't we talking about trees? Where are we now? This question asks about flowers and shrubs. Oh, no, we're just dealing with trees. Just trees. Yeah. Oh, did it originally not say public shade tree? Is that why he's? Previously, it just said on public property. So I think he's saying one or more trees within a public right of way. And, and I don't know if you need to, um, he's questioning if all work needs to be defined, but I think it's subject to the following, specific about permission for planting one or more trees is subject to these conditions. So I don't think, like he asked, should all work be defined? I don't think so. I think you could just say all work in a public right away. Right. Yeah, because it's all pertaining to planting the trees. So I, I'm, I'm fine. I'm actually fine with his suggestions of adding grant to petitioner and planting one or more trees within public right away. Yes, I agree. You know, so we just delete his comments, but accept his um, accept his um, yes. edits. Uh, the point of Mimi, he has public right of way. It's all capitalized. So that just needs to be uncapitalized unless do we have public right of way capitalized throughout the document? I see it above in the paragraph above under E1. But I guess the question is just consistency formatting. Oh yeah, I don't think it is capitalized. I'll have to go through and look. Yeah, maybe just sure. highlight that, Colleen. Like, just put it in yellow, maybe. In the definition, just public is capitalized, if that makes a difference. There's a definition. Public right of way. Then you'll have to just do a find or place. So you just want the word public capitalized? I don't, I think that's capitalized because it's the first word of the sentence there. Um, I don't think it is, but I'll go through and look. So it, sh it should just be all the same, but I don't think it is. Right, because in the first paragraph too, in the first line, it's public right of way is capitalized. And then it goes back to the third line. It says public right of rights of way is not right there. I'll have to look at that. Okay. And I'm fine with this next clarifying at at all costs incurred. And so the, is everyone okay with that in course of the planting of the trees? Yeah, I'm good with it. I'm good. Part D though, Mimi, he asks his question is he or states this is way too vague. The petitioner shall execute a release in the favor of the town. So I think um, town council looked at that and was okay with it. I mean, that's a legal thing that's beyond my 
Interesting. Yeah, maybe Wednesday night. We just ask. Because he recommends just removing that. But you're saying our town council inserted it? Well, I think it was there in what part of the law. He was okay with it. Okay. I'll have to double check his too. So that's a question. And then the next one is G1. Sorry, Mimi, just to go back, I'm looking at town council's uh, red line mm -hmm. on the previous sentence there. Um, the that release? Was, yeah, that was E2D, E2D. Yeah. So in the town council's red line, E2D, let me just make sure I'm looking at it. Um, um, his red line, he actually added that phrase, that D, he added that phrase under D. That was from town council. He actually added that in, I believe. Okay. So we have competing attorneys. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have ever thought? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so for now, leave that in there? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So on to G1 applica applications for permits. Um, he added the clarifying language for public shade tree pruning or removal, which I'm fine with that. Yep. Anyone else okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. And then where's the next? Is it J1? Five. I think those are just comments, Eight, right? Five. Meeting? Yeah, they're a little they're a little dumb. Typos? Typos, yeah. The next is H5, non-hazardous public shade tree. Oh. Yeah, I don't know what to do with this one. So he's looking for um a de definition of non-hazardous. And he says, does non-hazardous mean any tree that does not pose an imminent hazard? Your research didn't uh, find another town that took care of this, Mimi? Well, so this, all of this is from other towns. So other towns are using that term non-hazardous? Yeah. At least one other town is? So, so then I, I, I mean, I don't know. My my feeling is if it's if it's unsightly or ugly and they just don't like it and it doesn't meet the other reasons why a tree warden would take it down and it goes to a tree hearing. Go away. I mean, I feel like that should be on the whoever petitions for this to go to tree hearing. If they want it removed and they're willing to invest in it, maybe it's made very clear to them. But if it's not an imminent hazard, 
or poses threats. I, I understand his point. I can see cases where the town should pay for it, but I, I kind of liked the way it was written. Yeah. Yeah, I was fine with the way that it was written. And then that would be, you know, the call would be the tree warden in consultation with the planning board. And they can always appeal the decision, right? Correct. There's always an appeal. There's <laughs> <laughs> So I personally am fine with, I, I understand his points, but I think it's fine. I think unless the tree warden deems it required to come down, then it shouldn't be on the town's dime to remove it. Right. So we're going to leave the word um, tree in there, public shade tree to clarify, and then leave the phrase as is. Leave that item as is. Exactly. Yeah. Leave it as it's, yeah. Yeah. Just resolve the comment. Just a comment to us. He might want to bring it up on Wednesday. And just so you know, it's our intent to make these changes tomorrow to get at least get the ones we're all agreed, you're agreed to, to get into the warrant. Yeah. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Okay. All right, what's the next one? Defining private purpose. I think that's the same reason that's non-hazardous tree, right? That's a private purpose. Yeah. I don't think it has to be defined, but that's, I, I was fine with it as originally written. Yeah, I don't either. And the last is M enforcement M. So I think that's language from like zoning fines, I think. Mm -hmm. or I think you're right. His point's valid. Yeah. So I would agree that you just delete that last sentence from each to offense. Oh boy, that's a big question. So M, M2 is going to be um, just that one sentence, the second sentence in that M2 is going to be deleted, correct? Yes. Okay. I don't think we know the impact of, the, of Andrew's uh, suggestion about the tree warden's compensation. I think we'd, we'd have to get details from DPW as to uh, what those numbers are and what, um, what other tasks the tree warden does other than what we describe here. I suppose it's possible, but probably take it one step at a time. 
if it's um, Yeah, I don't know. It would take a while before the um, tree fund had enough money to pay a salary. And that would kind of defeat the purpose. We wouldn't be able to plant any trees until we had enough money in the fund to pay a salary. Which may never happen. Right. So my question on this, I found um, a bylaw in Concord that within the bylaw, they created a tree fund. And because there's been so much conversation of whether this can be done and can we edit another bylaw and to put in this revolving fund, I was wondering if we could, within the bylaw, create a tree fund and then at a subsequent meeting, edit the, the revolving fund table and do the spending limits? Or does it have to be done up front when you create the fund? Well, that's the question if you, um, the feedback from town council was, um, I think he, he leaned towards separate articles, but he said it's feasible to do it in one as well. But that was, it, it, he didn't elaborate more on that. And in taking this, in, in putting together this uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I looked at the table um, of the other revolving funds and it seemed to be consistent that salaries and wages of full-time employees shall not be paid from the annual budget. Um, I think the majority of the other, they may only be in one exception to that for some special reason, but most of them had that under part E, if I'm not mistaken. I would err with leaving it in. And then if we have to provide a amendment on the town floor, but just leaving it as it's written. And I agree. Okay. And then try to figure out the answers between now and town meeting. It was great feedback from Mr. Dennington. Yeah, I really appreciate it that he went through the whole bylaw line by line. It's very helpful. Okay. All right. We good? Open it up to the public or the planning board. Any questions or comments? No questions. Anyone from the public? All set, Mimi, uh, for tonight, everybody? All set. This is pretty much what we envision is getting a, a quality first, second, 10th draft uh, ready for a public hearing. And this is our second public hearing, giving people an opportunity to read it and comment, which we have at our last uh, hearing. And again, tonight, this is how the process works well when people spend the time during the hearing and don't wait until 
it's on the town meeting floor to ask, you can always ask questions and make amendments, but it would seem that sometimes we get that um, and realize that what the proponents are trying to do uh, at the town meeting could have been done during the public hearing. I have one more thing I forgot. To Go ahead, Amy. The um, select board, so Lisa, the select board chair, put together a, um, a, a temporary process for tree removals in place um, until this bylaw is passed. And there's been a lot of um, discussion on whether it will be passed at the annual town meeting or if we'll run out of time, it may have to be postponed to the fall. So she put a uh, interim process in place and the select board um, voted to accept it at their last meeting. So it requires hearings for uh, removing trees. Where did that come from? Where did it came, come from? Uh, Lisa and she sent it to me and I looked at it and it's from our previous uh, policy that we tried, uh, tried to put together. That's what I thought. So your work prior to this has had some effect, at least temporarily. Well, it, it got us working on a bylaw. <laughs> Yeah. So there is some process in place, which um, from what I can tell, there hasn't been one to this date. So that's a positive thing. Anything else? If not, we'll move on to the next agenda item. But we first have to continue this public hearing. Uh, to our next meeting, which is uh, April 25th. So move. Second. And that would that be at 7.20 p.m.? Yes. Yes, Karina? Yes, 7.20. So the motion is the motion is to continue the public hearing for the uh, Warner article to add a section to chapter 153 trees to April 25th at 7:20. Is that the motion? That's the motion. So moved. And seconded. All right. Any questions or comments? Hearing none. All in favor? Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Latralia. Bullahan, yes. Okay, thank you. Next item on the agenda is a continued public hearing uh, to propose warrant article for scenic roads, continued from March 28th. Any news on movement or questions, comments, news from uh, that you've heard, Karina? Uh, yes, um, we. Um, sent an email to uh, conservation agent, Ms. Lisa Danza, asking her, her to query with the um, Conservation Commission um, as to um, their current um, interest may not be the right word, but um, perhaps wanting to co-sponsor this warrant article for scenic roads, uh, seeing how they were um, the, the uh, sponsors in the previous years. Uh, for the uh, warrant articles to make scenic roads. And um, the feedback was that um, it's not that they're not in support of the article, um, but they haven't really uh, been fully um, in involved in, in, in the article itself. So um, it, it didn't, they didn't wanna rush it and, um, and felt it was, they weren't comfortable at this point to take a, position to actually co-sponsor, but that doesn't mean that they were necessarily against. That just means they weren't ready to co-sponsor something that they hadn't super, uh, vetted to the level they wanted to vet it.
Very good. Uh, and the the uh, rule says the state uh, says that the scenic roads, it's um, planning board, conservation commission, or historic, yeah. Doesn't say and so any one of the three can bring this forward, and in this case, it was the planning board. Um, I did hear. Was that all, Karina? Yes. I did hear. I think that. I think it was Mr. Dennington was wondering why we're desig wanting to designate all the public roads in town as scenic. Um, and it's a good question. Um, I think there's at least one other town that we researched. It's done that. Um, and some towns have very, very few scenic roads. It would seem to me that if we uh, designate all of the roads as what we're, what we're proposing, there's no harm in that. And there's great benefit to do it otherwise and select certain roads without a um, formal uh, criteria, which the state law does not have, uh, we would have to create a criteria, adopt one uh, that would guide us toward designating one road over another as scenic. In the absence of that, again, uh, the town of South Pro has um, once before designated all of the public ways as scenic. And as I said, not aware of any harm in doing that. And it provides additional protection for those roads. It's, um, I guess if I was a tree and I was on a scenic road, I'd feel better than maybe uh, another tree friend of mine who might be living on a non-scenic road. And, um, having that, that tree uh, be concerned about the uh, that le same level of protection. So other than that, um, I, I, I also have heard uh, informally, I guess, that there's a suggestion or an idea to bump this article along with the tree article to another town meeting. And um, I think what I would recommend to the board is that we uh, allow these to be printed in the warrant, allow them to go to the town meeting floor and um, see how it goes. If there's time to hear them, then let's do it. Let's get it done. And if there isn't, um, there should be a discussion, not just about these two articles, but others that we may not have time to uh, process in just two nights. So again, doesn't seem to be any harm in keeping it in the warrant and hoping that we can efficiently get through uh, all of them. I haven't heard any more about um, consent. There was some discussion about uh, articles being passed uh, by consent which I think the town moderator um, may have indicated at one point as a way of, uh, you know, saving time. Open it up to the board. Any questions or comments? No questions. Yeah, go ahead, Karina. Um, one thing I want to remind the members that um, we can draft a short report from the planning board to town meeting for um, at the time when you close the public hearings for these, uh, just to ensure that um, if they don't go through that, there's no confusion that they can um, be brought to the next town meeting if the planning board supports their warrant articles, like we've done in the past. So we, we would have that uh, report prepared and ready for voting um, if necessary. Correct. 
Well, these aren't zoning, so I don't think that there's that gap like there is with zoning. Well, that's true too. These are this is a general bylaw, and the other is a warrant article. So um, that that maybe that's right. I mean, in the past, they were zoning amendments. Have you heard anything about a dry run? Practice town meeting to go through these. I know Mr. Semino sometimes, well, all the time has, so that he understands who to call on, who, who to expect to speak to each article. We haven't gotten to that point yet, I guess. I haven't heard anything. I think once they sign the warrant, then, then they go into that phase. Sure. Any questions or comments from the public on the uh, Scenic Road Warren article? If not, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Oh, we will um, entertain a motion to continue the public hearing for the Scenic Roads to um, April 25th at 7.25 p.m. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. In any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Patrell, yes. Lahan, yes. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a discussion item MBTA communities. Carino, what you went over with me this afternoon, I would think would uh, help the public and the board understand where we are with this. Okay, so um, just to catch up that um, the deadline for March 31st and the comment letter to the DHCD, the state in um, on the uh, guidance documents, um, there was a lot of pushback and all kinds of workshops on that. Um, so I received um, an informational email um, indicating that the, um, the next deadline for MBTA communities uh, is to submit the MBTA community information form by May 2nd, 2022. And the second requirement is hold a briefing of your select board on the draft compliance guidance no later than May 2nd and attest to that on the MBTA uh, community information form. So I've been asked by EDC coordinator, you know, who's who's taking the charge for this? Who's who's the who's the um, who's the lead on this? Um, and I said that we would be discussing this. We have it on our agenda um, to come to terms with that. Um, and I think there was. Forgive me, Don, but you mentioned two things. I, I, we discussed two things earlier, and one was that that we have this. The town has this deadline um, in order to um, remain in compliance while the DHCD is finalizing these guidelines, and those are those two things: this form by May second, and select board have to hold a meeting and attest um, to that on this information form. So it would lead me to believe that at this point, um, this should kind of fall within the select board's lap to uh, take on these two tasks because it, 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 it refers specifically to them in the information. So um, I have copied, actually I forwarded um, this information as well as other information on um, the status of the MBTA communities to Mark Purple, um, the, the select board chair, Lisa Braccio, um, as well as the planning board members so that they stay informed as to this topic. Um, so they should be aware of this requirement. Um, also, you know, town council had um, several months ago provided an advisory um, to the select board as well. And, and we had received that too. So I guess I'm just looking for consensus that um, from the planning board's perspective, that should be the approach. 
Go ahead, Marnie. Just a point of clarity. So I know as a community, like the select board, Mimi helped write the letter. So we've written a letter that says, you know, we basically don't think we're subject to a lot of this stuff. So we, I guess, is there any FAQs by the state around if you've basically suggested that we can't comply, like why you'd still need to go through all of these things? It, it just kind of... Well, you don't need to. What happens is that if you don't provide an MBTA community zone um, as outlined by the DHCD's criteria, that then you're not, um, you can't there's take four, advantage of the funding. Right. There's three or four funding sources that we get uh, either shut off from or reduced if we don't participate. It's, this, it's the usual, you know, when the state asks the towns to do something, if you don't do it, then you, you risk getting uh, less state funding or grants. And one of them happens to be the one-stop application that the EDC is working on. And I believe I forwarded planning board members. You may not have a chance to see it. It was pretty late this afternoon. Um, Mark Purple had put out a, uh, a letter about that grant application that the EDC is pursuing again, or the select board is pursuing through the EDC um, to the uh, about $40,000, $45,000 for the Route 9 uh, wastewater study. Um, so, you know, that's, we talk about it and we've, we put the information out there, but there's there is no clear um, jurisdiction yet as to who will be uh, taking kind of the lead. And you know the planning board should absolutely be involved in the planning department, but you know in these early stages, um, I, I think some of these initial tasks have to be decided, or the select board has to have consensus that this is. What the town wants to pursue and and take that action right they signed the last the, the last letter what a week or 10 days ago two weeks ago um i Correct. would think that it's expected that they would take the lead on this but that letter was a great uh group effort uh conservation planning selectman select board um Maybe a few others uh, oh, participated. Yeah. Can Maybe I ask a question? Go ahead, Mimi. Um, so I know this information form requires you to lay out a zone. Are, are we held to that? It doesn't make any sense that we're saying that we can't comply with the guidelines. We submitted the letter saying that by the deadline, but yet they still want us to move ahead by May 2nd and create a zone that we can't create. And I would say that I would think it would be a collaborative effort with the planning board and the select board because it's a zoning issue. They're just, you have to create a, a zoning district or an overlay. So if we fill out this information sheet and we just plop down an overlay anywhere, are we held to that? Because if they Those revise all... the guidelines and say, oh, it doesn't have to be a half mile, you can put it somewhere else, it doesn't need to be this size, can we change it's a, it? It's a little bit the tail wagging the dog because um, <laughs> if you do that, then what's the purpose of making the modifications? From the state's point of view to the guidelines so right yeah but there has to be some kind of a decision at at the um select board with planning board feedback i would imagine on to even move forward with this approach um or to simply say you know we're not going to do this and therefore we won't be anticipating these funding 
avenues, but it's the select board that's looking for using the one stop grant program for their uh, study along Route 9. And, um, you know, whether they get that or not, that's one thing, but they're applying for it. So um, I'm just not sure where to, you know, how to proceed. We don't want to let it go by if the select board feel it's an important thing and the planning board thinks it's important, but. But how do we move forward without updated guidelines? And right. it's my understanding that, that the state uh, fully expects to change the guidelines. Right, then the approach could be to simply sit and hold but then you don't have interim compliance. So it's really odd that, you know, they make these deadlines, but it's kind of up in, in the air. Like what is really going to be the document that the towns have to follow to meet this? So, you know, and, and, and even in that sense, that's another decision that has to be made. Does the town want to just sit on this until the DHCD comes to terms with the pushback that they've received? So, you know, it's all really valid, but there has to be a, a somewhat of a consensus, I guess, on what to do. Sit tight and wait for the changes, or, you know, I haven't fully investigated the form yet. So, but as you say, if it says laying out a zone, you know, that's not always such an easy task either. How cursory you do it now could impact you later. Right. Well, especially if we lay it out going by the current guidelines and then they change them, are we stuck? Who knows? Doing something we can't really do? Yeah, you, and it has to pass town meeting anyway. You know what I mean? It's a zoning amendment. So in the end, the town could possibly vote not to accept that zoning change. And with the caveat knowing that they would not be able to take advantage of those particular grant strategies. So from so, what, what we're hearing then is a willingness to participate in the process um, and at the same time share with the selectmen, select board, um, our Maybe, uh, maybe not confusion, or maybe it is confusion, but our concern about open items and potential um, conflicting actions. Uh, if we if we uh, follow the uh, current rule, even though it conflicts with our letter, it says that we can't. If the board. Um, is okay with that, then we'd probably ask the town planner or a planning board member to uh, pass that on to the select board. And I can tell you- With, the, un you with the understanding that we are not the lead on this, but we'll be, we're willing to work with whoever the lead is. Yeah, I agree. I think I think um, Karina with one of us should be part of this. It looks like, I, I don't know, just quickly looking through Colleen, scrolling through that, you get to answer yes or no. So it seems like it's, I mean, maybe the first step is just the intake process is to see how, like what this form is, but Karina probably shouldn't be doing it on her own. She should probably be doing it with someone from select board or Mark Purple. So Karina, do you feel that after this agenda item tonight that we send some type of message to the select board or we don't and we just wait to see if somebody else wants to do it, do something? Well, it's probably in the planning board's best interest. My first thought is that, um, you know, I can draft a letter and the planning board 
um, agree, you know, looks at it and agrees to say, look, these are the these are the things we need to think about, and you know, we're bringing this to your attention because the select board is involved in this initial at least form, but here are the conflicts. So we need to decide, the, the town needs to decide how to move forward. Something that explains what we just talked about, um, but showing that the planning board, um, you know, is, is, is talking about it, thinking about it, and, it, it, you know, is not just letting it pass by unnoticed, you know. It's hard to say because it, it is such a huge uh, task and change that the state is um, pushing on to the communities in a relatively short time frame to make these decisions. And there are costs involved. If you do move forward with doing this, you have to do build out analyses and et cetera. So let's, um, unless somebody wants to volunteer to help Karina with this right now, let's let the board members uh, think about it and reach out to Karina tomorrow. Uh, I think we're, unless there's uh, some additional info or perspective or opinion, we could move on to the next agenda item. I'll, I'm willing to reach out Karina I, tomorrow. Um, tomorrow and Wednesday I have some blocks of time during my day. So when you, let's just connect offline. Okay, I'm, I'm back and forth too. I have several appointments and a couple things I have to take care of and then, and then Monday's a Importantly, holiday. Importantly, that should be your urgency. <laughs> <laughs> See how I get through the night. <laughs> so. Any questions right. or comments after this uh, on MBTA? Communities. But just it's one not, more thing. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Um, Colleen, that form that you just had, can you do a printout, like a PDF printout on that and pop that in Dropbox? I was just gonna email you the link. Oh, that works. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. I'm almost done. You should already have the link too in an email from today. We sent out that uh, and you were um there it is. Oh, on it to, that's to, the form. Oh, I thought that was the draft guidelines that would need that link. Yeah, and there's the form right there. It takes you right to it. Okay, perfect. I have it. Okay. Uh, I don't see anything else on the agenda that we didn't cover. Motion to adjourn. Second. Most has been made and seconded. Any discussion? See Kate smiling. <laughs> it's not nine o'clock yet. Pretty close. Most has been made and seconded. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes. Bills, yes. Stein, yes. Luttrell, yes. Houlihan, yes. We're returned. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Good night everyone. Take Thank care you. of yourself, Thank you. please.